I try to think about it like this person is coming in with a certain level of fear and I need to make sure that they're right. Demario Davis has earned that respect from his peers. It's why he was voted 43rd in the NFL's top 100 in 2023. But what does it take to be the best at 34 years old and on year 12 in the NFL? You know what's coming. LeBron James set the standard for all athletes on how to achieve sustained excellence and longevity. Some believe that Davis's career is nearing its end. He's proving them wrong. Davis let us peek behind the curtain on how he prepares and recovers for each game. This is their process. Here he comes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tamara, what do you remember about the first time you met Alexis? Oh, man, <laughs> uh, that was an amazing day. Man, it cha changed the trajectory of my life. I vividly remember this day. Um, it was week 15, the Cleveland Browns were playing the Buffalo Bills, and I was still treating another player. The phone rang, the receptionist looked at me because it was already after hours, and I said, don't worry, if it rings again, I know it's meant for me. And it rang again, um, and, and it was Demario, and he said, uh, you got this foot detox, I need to come get it. I said, okay. And he walked in and I said, oh, you're not here for a detox. Uh, and I knew instantly that just looking at him, that there was more to the story. I had plantar fasciitis in my right foot. Uh, it had gotten so bad, it, I, I was limping when I played. And that was just the least of my problems. I mean, my, my joints was hurting. I was having like back pain, didn't know why. I had had no major injuries. It was just like, I was just in pain. So like my body was like fighting itself. I went in and she took me, uh, she did the foot detox, but she started to notice like all the other kind of things that was going on. She proceeded to just kind of give me like a diagnosis. And she was like, she pretty much just told me like, you're not performing up to the level that you're capable of. It's like, I don't know what you got going on, but it's almost like you, holding in a lot of stuff and your body is showing like the detox by this time the foot detox my water was just black air pulled out so much stuff she was like we just got to get a plan then i pulled you into the treatment room because i was like oh there's so much more here and then i didn't want to overload you because it was the night before the game and so i took your email and i said i'm going to give you this and it was the one page write-up that i did about your blood type and, and so I gave you basically the seeds, planted the seeds, and it grew overnight because after that game, he sent me an email that said, I'm in. Before buying in to what would be a long-term plan, Davis was ready to hang it up after year five in the NFL. In 2016, Davis was 27 years old. The average length of an NFL player's career is around three and a half years. I really prayed to God um, that year. I was about to retire, but I literally went in the prayer closet and I just said, God, I knew he wasn't done with me in the game. I knew he wasn't done, but I couldn't go anymore. So I, I was just giving up on God. I was just like, God, I can't do it. I can't do what you want me to do. You got to do it through me. And um, he was like, I got it. I got it from here. Just remember you waved the white flag and literally he started putting people like Alexis on my path and all I had to do was say yes. It was slow at first, like when you first started saying yes and you started doing stuff, it wasn't like when she worked on me the first night, like my body just felt brand new. I knew something different was happening, but it was, it was like a, 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 wooden, a wooden cart just kind of rolling down the road and like imagine that wooden cart just stop and then like, okay, it's starting to roll again. And so it was like achy, like to get up and go get recovery to like push myself in training because everything was still hurting, but I was just trusting. I just started to take my recovery to a different level. And what I started to notice was like that cart was starting to move faster and faster. Fast forward to the off season, the summer of 2017. 
Davis was training in California and all of the sudden, he started to reap the benefits of the seeds planted nearly five months prior. And I'll never forget, I got worked out three times when I was in bed with my wife. And I was like, I don't feel tired. And my wife was just like, what? I was like, I don't feel tired. I was like, this is not, this is weird. Like I should be tired. And so the last day that I was there, I said, I'm just gonna work until I get, until I can't go no more. Like I'm gonna try to exhaust myself. I ran on the hill, I was on the hill for two hours, went to the field and was working out, was doing drills. And, on, and I went to the weight room, I was in the weight room for like three hours. And the only reason I left the weight room was just because it was time to take, take our kids out. We were going to hang out. And it was like, wait, I can't get tired. And as I was doing that, it just hit me. It was like, oh, God is part of what you say. You ask for your body to be rejuvenated and it's rejuvenated. Davis was feeling better than ever, but Cleveland failed to notice that change and traded Davis back to the Jets before training camp. After a career year in 2017 in New York, the Jets still weren't sold on Davis. The Saints would profit off their loss, and it was in New Orleans where Davis found the missing piece to his team. One to his left, Saquon Barkley joins him in the backfield. Saints bring pressure, and they're going to get to him. They're going to get to him. Eli Manning gets taken down in the backfield. Demario Davis continues to make big plays with his defense today. Loss of nine on the play brings up a fourth down. Came to New Orleans and 2018, I hurt my hamstring in a game. And then uh, Dr. J was working with uh, Mike T. And Mike T told me he had somebody and he came over and worked on my hamstring. And he had my hamstring right because they thought I was going to miss the game. They thought I was gonna, I had a grade two strain um, in my hamstring and uh, the doctor said I already ruled me out. And we worked on it and I didn't miss any time. And uh, me and him started working serious that off season. So I hit him up that off season and he came out to Nashville and we started working. And then, so he's been a part of the team ever since. Between him, him and Miss Alexis, like those are my main two, she handles like internal mainly all the things going on internal in my body and he handles all like the external and training and it's a nice little collaboration the perfect team created the fountain of youth through fascia treatment diet nutrition sleep specific ways to train the body and much more davis has been able to excel on the football field from 2018 to now most people don't know they know i'm doing something but they don't know what and so uh we're very, we're very private about all the stuff that we do. Like, um, we're willing to like open this up, but we'll never show like all of what we do. Not every athlete is doing this. Not every athlete has providers, has tr extra trainers outside of what the team provides. How have you guys been able to find this fountain of youth with Demario? Um, you know, I think it starts at the basics, right? So um, when we look when we go from inner to outer and we're looking at the micronutrient level of his being, we're able to really fine tune and create the formula that's specific to him. So when people you know, say, well, I want that program, unfortunately, it's not that simple because everybody is different. Um, and, and over the years, we have perfected um, as best as we can his protocol. So I work with Alexis usually Sunday night through Tuesday. Because I've worked with Demario for so long, there are always areas that work that I know to look at. How many hours do you guys work together each week? Like in a regular week, let's say he's not dealing with an injury or something like uh, that. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'd say average. At least 20 hours, right? Yeah. 20 hours or more. So like we use on the front end of the week, what we're doing is kind of like flushing out all the trash, getting the body back balanced. And then it's about slowly getting that function, make sure that range is still there, make sure the power is there, making sure the speed is there. And once all the trash is gone, it's reset, it's ready to go. Then like Saturday and Sunday, we're just priming the body, getting it ready for the game. Yeah, that's just, I'm just trying to move everything up and then we'll use some of that muscle stimulation real quick to kind of help flush it and activate it. It's like quieting the body down to a whisper so you can be in tune with it. I mean, it's a process. I mean, like, 
we're working for hours. You know, it's not like a one hour massage. So the goal is for him to feel like week one every week on Sunday. So I love getting the calls like, man, I felt great. This is this is the formula that we need to do every week. If it's not, then I need to know I need to bring something different to for next week. It's priming the body. So it's almost like loading the gun so that when it steps on the field, it's fire, it's ready to go. So imagine like the Iron Man suit like charging up. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like that. And then like when you step on the field, it's you're just ready to fire the trigger. The formula isn't just set up to keep Davis playing at the top of his game. It's to combat injuries meant to sideline him for weeks, like the hamstring strain back in 2018 that almost no one knew about. That same formula helped perform a miracle this season in week seven. He's like, man, you know, think, you know, I got this M MCL, or saying MCL, grade two, and what do you think? And, you know, first thing in my head, I'm like, well, when I get down there, I already know what type of person he is. I know he's gonna take everything we need to do to get this ready. And then Miss Alexis is already in the beginning attacking it. So I know she's gonna take care of the inflammation. She's gonna take care of everything we need to do. So when I get there, I could just put the finishing touches. So that's great having this, this team to be able to do that. And um, once I got in there and we kind of talked about it, I knew we had a chance. We have great equipment. Um, so between the Indiva, uh, the Shockwave, um, a couple other pieces of equipment that were brought in um, by it happened on a Sunday. By Monday afternoon, almost 90% of the swelling was gone. Um, he had this device on 20, I think 20 hours of the day, running different programs. And I think Tuesday afternoon, we all were convinced that he would play Thursday. I knew something wasn't right. So, uh, they give me, they, they, they take me and they get the images and then uh, I'm leaving and they say, hey, we need you to come up to the facility. And I know that when they tell you to come up, I know that's bad. So I go in and they give me the, they give me the results, tell me what it is. And they was like, well, fortunately there wasn't any, uh, it didn't fully tear. And I'm like, well, that's, that's a good thing. It was like, and they was like, well, it's not that good. You know, uh, you probably gonna, you probably gonna miss uh, about four weeks and I was just like I was devastated I never had been told even when I had hurt my hamstring I'd never been told that I was gonna miss time because they knew they thought I was gonna miss time with the hamstring but they didn't tell me that we had a Thursday game that week and I just started to the first thing I just kind of prayed because you know I was I was kind of just getting ready to accept it um, but I was like well I don't know I'm gonna I'm try to play you know, I, if I can play, I can play, you know. And so I went home and the first thing I did was uh, I talked to my wife about it and I asked her because I know she, like sometimes I would just get real bullheaded, but she's always like, like, like the karma. She, she's always has a level head. So she's never going, if it's foolish, she'll just tell me that's foolish. And she, when I talked to her, she said, well, if you can play, I would try to play. So when she gave me the green light, I, just, I knew I could go for it. So, uh, and then one of my mentors called me and he said, I don't think you're supposed to miss this game. And me and him been talking all throughout the season just about what God's doing. And that was the first time where I felt like God may be saying, you need to play. And then uh, Wednesday, they were like, they were just, my, at this point, like they were just like, dog, you need to just go ahead and accept that you're not playing. Like, that's coming from the Saints. Yeah, they, they were just like, you need to accept it. Like this has never happened, you know, in, in 20 something years of medical experience, like we've never seen anything like this, you know, on a Sunday game, let alone a Thursday game. And I was like, I'm not trying to disagree with the medical advice. I'm not saying that you are wrong. I just said, I can't rule myself out. And if God is saying yes, I definitely can't say no. And so then my mentor called me, he said, you're gonna know if they give you a workout in the morning, you'll know that morning if you're ready to go. And so we, we just kept working, kept working, just kept working. And we were working around the clock, like all day long on a, on a week like this, just nonstop, just straight on the knee. And uh, when the doctor called me on Wednesday and said, hey, we're going to give you a chance to work out. 
And so that morning, when we get ready to go, we went up, we worked, we did some stuff that morning, because I think I had to be on the field um, at like 11. And so we got up early that morning, did some stuff, primed the body. And we got in the car, he started to tell me, he said, this is what they're going to be looking for. He said, this is your game. So when you do warm-ups, when you do everything, you got to do it full speed. And as I started to go out there, I was so nervous because I didn't know what I was going to feel. But as I got on the field, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. And once I did like certain movements that I knew I should feel and I didn't feel it, I just got more excited and more confident. And I just ran faster and I just cut harder and more explosive. And I was screaming like, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. I mean, I, I was so amazed at what God was doing. I mean, I was saying it like, I know it was shaking the whole stadium. It was no one in there, but I was saying hallelujah and praise God so loud because I was amazed like, and something that was clearly seen to be impossible, God had did the impossible and, and made it possible. And it was happening in that moment. And so I, I told my coach, I'm like, I'm ready to go. You know, I got you. And I think they were still nervous, you know, even though a miracle was happening before them. I think they were still nervous, you know, because after the game, they was like, oh, we're so glad you made it through the game. And I'm like, I told you I was fine. And it was, what was interesting is that I had no other complications after that. Like you would think you would play a game like that, then the knee would swell up and you have to try to do that whole process over again. We never had to do anything like that after that. It was just like, we just got back on our regular regimen and you know, it was working full body. And um, it's just been amazing since. So that was just amazing to see God do something like that because I've seen other of my teammates have those same injuries and miss significant time. Davis and his team mastered how to work the body physically. What took Davis to the next level was brain training. Number two, you got to ah! Brain training gets the player to a state of flow, responding without thinking within the speed of an NFL game. This is something Davis knew the greatest of all time had figured out. I think that was a different level uh, that I needed to go to, and that was Tom Brady. So Tom Brady, like when I came in as a rookie, like I knew, I played him when I was with the Jets, you know, every year twice. And I knew mentally he was in a different place than all the other players. He was the only player I ever played like that. Uh, you no know, no disrespect to uh, like Drew Brees, I played against him twice. Uh, Peyton Manning and some of the other great quarterbacks. Tom was the only one that made you feel like you mentally weren't on his level. He's like, he's thinking about a different game. It's like, he's playing a game in space and we're here on Earth. And at one time, I thought he was an android. I'm like, this man, he is not a human being. He's he's just not. So he was just in a different place. And, you know, I think the years I was here, once I started to do the brain training, I realized how mentally we go to another level. And he really was. He was mentally in a place that everybody else wasn't at. And I don't know if he did brain training, but he knew the principles of brain training. He knew the principles of uh, manipulating the mind and what's going on in the subconscious. It's only only five to ten percent of the brain and what's happening and what you're thinking. The other part is ninety percent subconscious and how to manipulate the subconscious. And so, like, if you look at, I give you a Super Bowl with him, where Atlanta when he comes back and beats Atlanta. Well, Atlanta is over there thinking, but Tom Brady comes back in all of his games, so we can't, they're not even thinking like, we got the lead, all we got to do is close it out. They're thinking, man, this guy always comes back. Well, he subconsciously got everybody thinking on his time now. So even though they got the advantage, they're mentally at a disadvantage because they're, they're killing themselves thinking like that. And they're not counseling those thoughts. And so mentally he had just gotten, and but he was affirming that too, by how he was always winning and creating. So the mystique, we started with a thought, but then he constantly affirmed it. So once I started doing brain training, I noticed that he knew that I was a different player. So he had played against me my whole career, uh, but the way that he started acknowledging me in the game, like with the mic points and knowing where I was. And he used to do this thing like subconsciously, like he calls guys out 
in the media, like by hyping him up. Like that's the guy he wants to come at. And he like every time we played, like he would always call me out or, or give me some type of praise. There was like a praise. And he started to do that more and more. And I was like, oh, that's different because he didn't do that all the other games that we played. And so like to be on his radar was a big thing. But also it was like a chess match as well. So it was like, then it became like a game being played in space. And so that was always um, my favorite matchups uh, to go against him, especially when he came in the division here. And so I like to think that my brain trying to help me break him to temper so I can get some of these wins back. With all of the hours and training that goes into preparing for a game, the overall goal is always longevity. And at this point in Davis's career, the timeline has become very clear. We just came up with a new goal. New goal is to play two years after LeBron James retired from basketball. So he's still playing at a high level. He's still playing at a high level. I'm still playing at a high level. And it's like, okay, well, LeBron, he want to play with his son, supposedly. So he, he want to play. He going to probably play two more, maybe three more years. Maybe more, I can't put no time limit on him. So that's four or five more for me. And so that means, okay, well, I have to lock in now so that I can be making sure that I'm thinking that I'm running a marathon, not a sprint. I'm where I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this moment. God has me here playing football in this moment and he not done with me in this game.